Welcome to the first EnView Composer tutorial. Now let's open EnView. If you notice a screen tip box come up, please exit it now. Let's look over your EnView screen. At the top you'll notice the menu bar. Below that, the composition toolbar. Below the composition toolbar there will be two formatting toolbars used to format text and other icons. On the left, you'll notice the Site Manager that's used to manage your root folder and all the pages and files in your site. Here is the page area. This is where you actually edit your page. Above is a tab. This page tab is what will show up in the top area here inside your web browser. This does not have to be the same as the file name for your page. Below is the Edit Mode toolbar. This will have the different modes of your web page. Below that is the Status Bar. The Status Bar will display different tags that can be used to show elements of your web page. It is now time for us to save our first page. Select File on the menu bar, then Save As. Here, Envy is asking us to put in a title for the current page. The title will identify our page in a web browser up here in the top. This title does not have to be the same as our file name. Let's use com template. Select OK. Now you can choose wherever you'd like to save this. I'm in my documents. Under my documents, I've already created a folder called com201. If you'd like to make your own folder, simply right click select new and select folder and then type in the name of the folder you'd like to put it in. Once you're inside that folder we're going to make a root folder for just this website. It is imperative that all files and folders for your website are placed into this root folder. Select right click new folder. Let's use this file name put in your last name underscore com underscore 201 underscore site now go ahead and open this root folder again all files and folders will be saved inside this root folder let's add a new folder to start for our organization right click new and let's make an images folder. Now it's time to actually save our first page. It is important that we do not save it inside the images folder, but we're going to save it here in our root website folder. It is only image files that will get saved in your images folder. Going down to the bottom, again, we're going to call this file just template. So I'm going to take out com. I'm also going to switch the file type from XHTML to all files, and I'm going to add .html. Select Save. Now it's time to add the first element to our COM template page. On the composition toolbar, we're going to select Table. Tables allow web website creators to control where their content goes so that the HTML coding doesn't move something in a place that they don't want. The table we're going to create is a four row, two column table. Once we have that selected, we have the cells here. Double clicking inside any one of the cells will bring up the table properties dialog box. In this dialog box we have two options. The first option is under cells. This would allow us to change anything about that specific cell that I clicked in. In case this one was the first cell. We don't want to change anything about the specific cells but more the entire table. So we're going to select table here. Under table again we have a four row two column table. We need to select or change this from 100 pixels to 800 pixels. Pixels represents the dots that go across our screen and provide the resolution. The monitor you're currently looking at is a widescreen monitor but there are a lot of monitors still in use that are only 800 pixels wide. This would cause the user to scroll left and right if we used anything higher than an 800 width 
web page. Under border, we're going to select zero pixels. And under cell spacing, we're going to select zero. Under the current table, you see here the cell spacing was at two. And you can see the lines between each of those cells. That's what the cell spacing is. You can also see what the border is by the lines that you can actually see around the tables. These would be actually visible when you're in your web browser. Now that we have set it to zero pixels, we'll see lines here in the web editor, but when we launch this into a web browser, you will not see any borders around the table. We also have cell padding set at two pixels. This will allow our content to not butt right up against the edges, but be spaced just a little bit off set. We also want to change the alignment of our table to center. This will center our elements, the entire web page, in the center of the web browser. Depending on the person's monitor size will depend on how much extra space would be on the left and on the right of the web page. If it's on a smaller monitor, again an 800 resolution or 800 width resolution, it would fit perfectly right in the middle. Select OK. Now we can start editing our table to suit our web page. First, we want to select in the first cell and drag over to the second cell. We're going to merge these two columns or join these two cells together to make one large row. This will be a good place to put in our graphic at the top. Right click and on the shortcut menu, select Join Selected Cells. Now that cell is in one column. I want to repeat this process for the third and fourth row. Good. Now we can expand the main content area. Selecting here below the second row will allow us to change this pixel height down to around 300 pixels. Good. This will allow an area here for where our main web page content will go. Here will be our side navigation. We want to make this one a little smaller. So once you've clicked inside this cell, and notice the cursor blinking here. You'll see the ruler here. Going right between, we can select this and drag over to approximately 150 pixels. Now it's time to save. You can always tell it's time to save by seeing the little disk icon right above your page. If you see that disk icon, your page has not been saved since the last change that you've made. You can save multiple ways. File and selecting save, or always you can hit Control plus the S key as a keyboard shortcut. This concludes Lesson 1.